and they won this, this, this more cup, you know, they won this cup a little more than us because they never had, you know, they have just, just much less than us. So the missing of Gabi and Vakibank, you know, like was the missing of Gosde, like there was the missing of, of Melis. We think the, the, the volleyball market in general will change a lot. So we want people that put the team in front of themselves. I think we face the strongest team in the Champions League, together with Fenerbahce probably. Because, you know, the, 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 logic, the logic should say that if I have three in the court, I should have three in the, man, in the bench. <laughs> this question you should ask <laughs> to, our, to our player, uh, to my player, to my staff, after every loss that, that we are facing. We will not give this easy life to Exasibas. And I try also to put Gosde in the bench many years, but I was not able, you know. Means that always in Bucky Bank we try to choose the player first because of their attitude and second because of their skills. Probably we see each other like Baba and daughter and the destiny is, is open for everybody. Hi Giovanni, welcome. How are you? I'm good. A little bit in stress like always, so it's good. Maybe it's a little bit classic to ask, but do you remember how your road crossed with Bucky Bank? Yes, it happened many, 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 many years ago <laughs> and I was, in this moment, I was coaching in Kieri and I finished with Kieri and I was coaching in the German national team and come the, come the call from Wackebank and was something very new and Turkish volleyball was, was known but not so well known like now and I always like new challenge and new adventure like before I took American clubs and Bulgarian national team and German national team so I remember Nalan was my first meeting in Vakibank, so when Nalan came and she invited me here and yeah, I wanted immediately, I was very optimistic to try this adventure. So that's how we met the first time. After 16 years with Vakibank, how would you describe the secret of all of the success you got from the day one? I think doesn't exist, doesn't exist a secret, one secret. I think that is a combination of many things. I think one for sure was the trust in the club on me because Everybody knows the story, so a normal club would have fired me after the first season, you know. But they believe in me, they believe in the process, they, they believe in the project. And I think that, you know, I think if we want to, to tell one secret, probably is what we wrote in the locker room, you know. So in the locker room there is a very big, strong sentence that says that your talent brought, to, brought you inside this room but your attitude will decide if you stay or not. That means that always in Bucky Bank we try to choose the player first because of their attitude and second because of their skills. And so this, this legacy, you know, contribute to always have players that came here and fight like crazy. Also, if you see the, the captains of, of the, that this team had, you know, so Gosde, you know, Melis in the middle, you know, Gabi, you know, all these three captains, for example, was very clear to understand what we want here in Vakibank. So we want people that put the team in front of themselves. We, want, we always want very, very, very hard worker people. And these two combination, team in front and hard working, probably is what brought you, brought, what brought us till where we are now. Besides the success, you build a culture of winning here. What do you think the most important thing Vakibank added to you and you added to Vakibank? I think that it was, we grown together, you know, I, I always like to, to, to think of Bank like a family, you know, and, and, and you know, so we, we really grow together. So you don't learn how to be a parent, you know, and, and, and it's something that is a process that comes day by day, you know. So I think that I brought to Bucky Bank a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of, you know, I try to install a culture and Vaki Bank was very good to, to absorb this culture and make my culture and Vaki Bank culture the one only culture, you know. So we have one way to, to think, we have one way to, to work, we have one way to, to, to build the team and to be the, the people that have to form the team. So I think this is what we brought to each other. As you mentioned about family, Zahra once said my father in volleyball for you in one of her interviews. And you often say Vaki Bank is your child. Uh, what do you think about both the players you raised and the Wakafbank fans mentioning you as Baba? I mean, I think that is, is kind of normal because 
some of these players really I met when they were very, very young, you know. So some of them I met when they were 16, when they were 17, when they were 15, when they were 18, you know. So and I just, you know, saw the, the, their, their improvement year by year, year by year, year by year. You know, I can, I can mention, you know, all these kind of players. Of course, there are, I mean, I remember when Dera came from Bejiktas, you know, in our first training in the morning, she was like, wait, 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 what's going on here? You know, she really didn't understand, you know, what we want from her, what was the level that, that we expect her to play, and you know, and what where is there now? And Jansu, you know, I remember that we saw Jansu with this power, you know, incredible power that she was able to set, you know, precise eyeball from everywhere in, in the gym, not in the court, you know, in the gym, and watch where Jansu is now, and Aicha, and then, you know, Ebrar, you know, Bouquet, I mean, Alexa, I mean, remember Alexa, Alexa did our first training, I think she was 14. 14 and 15, I, we, were, we were the missing player, Alexia came in the training, I remember Milena Razic, after three attacks, she, 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 she watched me for Giovanni. This girl's impossible, she's 14 years old, impossible, she already played like 18, 19 years old, you know what I mean? And we have a lot of this story, you know, Gosde, I mean, the Gosde that put her t-shirt there is not the Gosde that start here. You know, and, and I try also to put Gosde in the bench many years, but I was not able, you know, because she was fighting, fighting, fighting. So all of them, many of them, you know, we really, we grow together. So I teach them something. They, they, they taught me a lot of things also. So I think we, I, I really learn a lot from them and, and I hope they learn something from me. And I think this, you know, it's it's very nice story for, for which one of them. So I don't know if they see me, probably we see each other like, like Baba, and daughter, you know, also the way we fight sometimes, you know, the way we are angry each other, you know, and then and, and, and there is also the way we love each other, you know, it's something, something different because it's really a long, long story with many of them. As Vakov Punk, you started the season winning the Champions Cup. We saw a very good Vakov Punk in the first one and a half months, but in December you lost the final of the Club World Championship against Ezajibosha and got the silver medal. Individually and as a, as a team, what do you think you did wrong or missing in the Club World Championship? That was, a, first of all, Exatibos, it was very good to, to don't give up, you know, because we were 1-0, 12-4, so we were really controlling the match in, in every element, struggling a little bit in position four, in attack, but all the other parts of the match we were controlling very good. And then, you know, like, like some time happened in Bolivia, you know, when you have this big advantage, then Okay, next, I can take this risk, I can make this mistake. Okay, next, but next, next, next. And the Exotibos, was always coming. Ferro, Ferrat was good to, to change some player and to find, to find a new chemistry in the team. And, and then after it became a, a, an equal match. And I believe, you know, like, like, like we spoke with, the, with, with our player, you know, beside our problem in, in, uh, in attack, especially in position four, in that match we struggled too much from our, you know, attacker on, on left side. I think that in this moment, probably Exatibos was more angry than us, you know. So I think that sometimes, you know, what, what happened in, in teams like us, that, that we won a lot and, and this player really won a lot. Sometimes I cannot say that we are not pushing because these players are pushing every day, but maybe we, we, we found a team that, you know, is a little more angry than us. You know, they won this, this more cup, you know, they won this cup a little more than us because they never had, you know, they have just, just much less than us. So this is something that we're still working on it. And I think also, also in, in Turkish Cup, probably Exagi wanted a little more than us. And, and but I'm, I'm also, I'm, I'm very happy the way we play Turkish Cup. So the improvement of the team. So let's see that in the playoff, we can change something. As you said, um, in the Turkish Cup, you again faced with Ezdaj uh lost in five sets. Uh, but normally, Vakuf Bank is known as the team of comebacks. But this time, in both of the situations, the uh, results were the difference. Do you think you are losing this identity? No, I think this, this, is, this is sport. I mean, we would lose this identity if a match like uh, China or a match like Turkish Cup, we would have lost 3-0 in one hour. You know, so if, if this, this means loses its identity, you know, come back. I saw come back in China. I saw come back in, in, in Ankara, you know, and then was, you know, one serve 12-12, Bosk with the serve 110 km per hour on the linear, you know, and okay. And then this, this service instead to, to be like this in is maybe is like this out and maybe we are 13-12 and maybe we won the match, you know, all of this match was really episode and, and that's okay. You know, that's okay. That, that's what I'm asking to the player. The, the, the important thing is 
to go out on the court and you know be happy with yourself be happy no it's not, it's not the right the right word but be okay with your with your with yourself that you gave everything you can that you fought like crazy and i think in ankara we saw this from all the players from vacuum you know the first you said we didn't play as good as we can but we, we started there that we don't accept to lose like this we will not give this easy life to exercise we wanted to fight like crazy and this is what we want to see and then they come back you know so sometimes are successful sometimes are not successful but they are always there you know like last year with with Fenerbahce you know we won golden set in Champions League okay in incredible way then we lost golden set in in playoff you know so but what I can say to the team you didn't fight no they fought like crazy because again we we brought Fenerbahce's golden set then you know sometimes you know this is sport sometimes you lose sometimes you win you are one of the most successful teams in the CEV's Champions League history with six championships. You started, this, you started every season uh, with aiming to win this cup. But t this season, after 12 years, you were eliminated in the quarterfinals by Imoko Kolegniano. Would you name this as a failure? Uh, what do you think the reason was uh, you were eliminated this early? No, I mean, I don't name like a failure because I would name like a failure if we would have lost against another team. I mean, losing Conegliano and also being able in Conegliano to, to change a little bit the match, you know, to go 1-0 for us and even 19-19, you know, two, three episodes that we could have even brought the match 2-0 for us is not a failure. We just lost against an incredible strong team. Because of course, Conegliano, I think that is playing very, very, very good and they are very, very strong in all elements of the match, you know, so and, and I think that I don't want to say they will win Champions League because Milano is good as well, but I mean, they are a very strong team. So I cannot say nothing losing in Conegliano. Of course, if, if we would have had probably a little better drawing of loss, we could have arrived to, to semi-final. I think we faced the strongest team in the Champions League, together with Fenerbahce probably. And, and then I don't consider it like, like, like a failure, but of course, you know, like, like you said, after 12 years, don't, don't be there, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy for us. And it's not easy also for, for all Turkey to not, have, to not have any Turkish team in the final. But I think right now, I mean, the Italian team are having kind of, I don't want to say a big advantage, but, you know, in Italy you just have to have three Italian in the court and as many foreigners you, you can in the match, you know, in the bench. So it's basically how they play the league, how they play the Champions League. So they, they are able to train their team you know, in the same way. And so I think this is a big advantage for, for Italian team and for, for Vakiban, for example, this year, you know, Chaka couldn't play any important matches, you know, because many times she was out, so she had to perform good one match in a while. So it's a bit, little bit disadvantage that we have, foreigner, uh, foreigner wise. And that's why I think that the Italian team are are pretty strong now. I want to ask about the foreign player regulations in the league. There are, you have six foreign players in the team this year. Because of the regulations in the league, you have only five uh, foreigners on the team for the game. Uh, therefore, you have one player out every match. How do you decide who is going to be? Yeah, first of all, I'm, I'm not happy about this rule because, you know, the, 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 logic, the logic should say that if I have three in the court, I should have three in the, ben in the bench. This is what the logic say. And like Italy, you know, like Italy have four in the court and five or six in the bench, you know, so it's very easy for the coach, you know, to manage any kind of team. So we are always, you know, we are always make big meeting, we are always discussing who has to be out, who will be out, and this is not easy to take this decision because, you know, whoever I take out of the team is an amazing player, you know, if I keep out of the team, Bianca, world champions, gold medalist and Olympic, Olympic silver medalist and European gold medalist, you know, or I take for, I take out Chaka or Jordan Thompson, Olympic gold medalist, or I take for, I, I take out Ali Franti, you know, another American national team player, very, very high level. So who has her, or Gabi, she was out just when she was injured, of course, basically, you know, because very important for our team. So very difficult. This, this, we struggle a lot about that. We suffer a lot about that. But I mean, I cannot change the rule, of course. But I believe that we can, we should review the, this rule because it's a big disadvantage between Turkey and Italian teams. And it's very bad to see a player, a so good player in tribune. You know, I would be happy to have this player at least in the bench, even if I cannot use. I would be happy to have this player in the bench, just, you know, 
signing I cannot use there and I think this at least will give to my team a sense of unity, a sense of fighting together every time, a sense of staying together every time that unfortunately we are missing. Some people say that you are tired and you lost your ambition to win. What do you think about it? Do you think the 10 year younger Giovanni and the Giovanni thing in front of us has the same level of ambition? <laughs> this question you should ask <laughs> to, our, to our player, uh, to my player, to my staff after every loss that, that we are facing. So I think these, these are the right person, the right person to, to speak. And uh, I think that, I mean, no, no one of us, you know, no one of us, every human being cannot be the same human being of 10 years ago. We are always not the same human being of five years or three years ago, and we will not be the same human being in five years. So of course the people are changing and, and the team are changing and the person are changing, you know, but if I would lose the passion or the desire to win, you know, I would not spend this time, so much time in this place, you know, like, like I'm spending, I would not spend so much time watching video and, and see what we can change, how we can become better. I will not push my player, you know, to, to give their best every day. I think this is, this is part of this job, you know, I, I really don't, don't, don't feel this. The, the moment I will feel like this, I believe I have to change job. I have to make director, I have to go in the junior, I have to change the way I see this job. But, you know, I like to fight every day in the gym to make the team, my team, my team, my player better. I like to fight every match, you know. Probably I'm fighting in a different way because I'm, I'm not more 35, you know. I'm not breaking any boat. <laughs> but also but probably because I think it's not the right way, the right thing to do, you know. It doesn't bring any help any help to the team. But this is a question you should make to my player more than me. Your locker room speeches are very popular. Uh, we know that you give speeches to team um, or even prepare some videos to motivate them before important games. Uh, does every speech or video have a story behind them? Uh, how do you manage to find the suitable metaphor for every situation? Can you give an example? <laughs> I wish I, uh, I, have, I have a secret, I have a way, you know, so I would always be very, very, very good in that. No, first of all, I think that is a very important moment. You know, for example, many times we use, like, like metaphor, we use uh, these Roman warriors, you know, that, that enter in the Colosseum, you know, and then they have to face, you know, these five, ten slaves. They have to face against, you know, 50 uh, Roman soldiers and and you know the and, and animal and, and, and tiger and horses you know and they don't have nothing you know so and, and I use this metaphor many times you know for them when we play against Fenerbahce you know in their stadium you know it's a kind we are just 10 of us 14 of us against 8,000 people against us you know and so if we are not united we cannot survive for sure you know but if you watch this movie you know it's so important how they talk each other before they enter in the Colosseum so it's kind of the locker room, you know? so this locker room part for me is very important. It's so intimate, it's, you know, really a team moment, you know, where, where we have to find, we have to find, you know, external motivation. We have to find something that is bigger than I want to win, because everybody want to win. And so I, I, I like to, to find inspiration and I'm, I'm, I'm reading many books, I try to, to watch a, as many stories as I can, you know, last year for Champions League, we. We use the metaphor of Hydra, that, that was very good, that is this mythological animal that when they cut one head, two heads will reborn. No? So you cannot, you cannot kill this animal, because every time you kill, it come two more heads. So basically, more time you kill, more time becomes stronger. So we use this metaphor because we came from some, some undefeated and, and then was good. And, and you know, this year even sometimes I use some a uh, superhero that I saw in, in, in my daughter's, you know, Disney movie, you know, that also can, can explain also what means be a team, what, what, how, we, why, how we like to fight. And I, tr I try every time, you know, to find something. And, and I think that this player, the team also like, like this kind, you know, when you are focused and, and, you know, you already know the tactic so good, you know, you don't want, I believe they don't want to listen again that, you know, Boscovich will attack here, Rande will attack there, we have to block here, you know, already we make 10 videos about that, you know, so I think that they just need something, sometimes to smile, sometimes to cry, sometimes to, you know, to find, you know, a strong, strong motivation and sometimes I'm, I'm happy with, about, with myself about that, sometimes I cannot find the right idea, so if, if I don't find the right idea, I don't use chat GPT, I, I, just, I just, you know, speak a little bit about volleyball and, and let the player talk. 
Begüm Kaçmaz, who grew up in the younger team, played her first uh, game with Vakıf Bank A team a couple of weeks ago. She showed a good performance here. How would you comment on, on her performance and improvement? <laughs> These are also one of the, the nice stories, you know, that maybe in 10 years she will tell to, to, to you guys or, or to somebody, you know, because I think that morning she went to school and she didn't even know that, that she had to come to the match. And I think we decide around 12-1, one. said, okay, but I mean, we have this Zera, maybe better we, take, we give Zera a rest. Chaka cannot play, okay, I call Begun. So we call Begun, I think, after the school she came. And said, Begun, I warm up, she already trained a couple of times with us, but not too much, because already I have four minute block. And Begun warm up, and in warm up, she attacked very strong. I saw the both set her watching me, said, Giovanni, where she come from? You know, because they, they, they don't know her very well, and you know, maybe in training, we don't make also, you know, so many free attack and then come free attack and she attacks two, two three ball inside three meters strong. And then the things are not doing well and the two meter blockers that, that were playing, you know, were, were not satisfying me that day. And also to give them, you know, a little bit of shock. Then I said, okay, Begun enter. And she was incredible how she did good, the easy things. You know, the difficult, because the easy things are, are the, the thing where the, the young kids normally, they, they struggle, you know, one set, don't touch the net, one cover, you know, this good easy serve. She did these things, the simple things, in a great, great way, you know. So she showed already a great personality, a great character, and, and I believe she will, have, she will have for sure a bright future. And it and was, was very nice to see how she was acting in the court, like she was training with us every day for the last five years, you know, and she just knew, <laughs> probably she, she opened the phone after the school and, and she jumped from the school to the match and, and then it was pretty good. Will we keep seeing Begum in the team this season or also next season? I think she will be always with us uh, because we need one, one, one more player. We have space for, for one more Turkish in, in, the, in, the, in the roster, so she will be always every match with us. and. I don't know if I will use because I think also after she entered, you know, the other middle blocker didn't like that so much, like has to be, you know, and then they start again to, to train very strong and to perform very good. And next season, I believe we should see her playing, you know, so probably Vaki Bank is not the right team for her and she has to play as much as she can. She's young, she don't need to spend time in the bench. You know, at this age, she needs to play. So first league, second league, you know, Sultan League or second league, I don't, I don't care. You know, we need to find, I, and actually we need. I will just give suggestion to player. I don't manage our player at all, you know, just I give suggestion when they ask me. And if she will ask us what is the best for her, we, we will tell her the, the best is an environment where they need a young middle blocker in the court, not in the bench. Because she has to stay in the bench, so better she stay in back. Are there any other young players you follow or coach your attention? There are many, there are many. We are, I mean, next year already, I think that in Vaki Bank we will have a younger team, you know, foreigner and, and Turkish. And in, in the young generation of Vaki Bank, I see a lot of very interesting players. I see a lot of very strong 15, or even 13 and 12 years old with a good body and, and very good attitude. So I think that now it's pretty clear, you know, volleyball for a woman is the first option in Turkey, you know, and they don't even have competitor with other sports. So now I think that, that, that all the Turkish clubs, they have the, the chance to collect the best young player. And this, I think, will bring, will bring a lot of great new player to, to, to the Turkish volleyball and to Vaki Bank, to all the club, it will bring a lot of great new talent. And I already saw many of them. Just, I believe that parents, managers, and of course us, we need just to, to stay more calm and more patient, you know, and especially in the parents' side, they don't need to think about the money when the players are 15 or 16 or 17, you know. At this age, they just have to think to give the player to the best a coaching environment to give the player to, to the best uh, place where they can perform and they can develop and after the money will arrive you know i'm shocked sometimes to listen that manager are speaking with our player at 13 or 14 years old come on i think this is this is not healthy at all you know i think they have to enjoy first of all at this age they have to love volleyball at the age they have to improve and play as much as they can after if they do the, all the passage, good. After will come the manager and will come the money. But 
why so early? We don't need to rush. The volleyball schedule has been very busy for many years and the players have completed the seasons almost with no days off and vacations. Sometimes this leads to injuries, burnouts and unexpected losses. What do you think about this busy schedule? And if you consider that you're also working with FIVB, what can be done to improve that? Yeah, first of all, a very good news that after Olympic of Paris, it will improve a lot. It will improve a lot. The new calendar that the FIVB made is, I believe, extraordinary because it will really allow, you know, the club season. She will, they will give to, to the club season a certain time, kind of, you know, October, May. Then there will be a, a big, a big rest. I'm not talking about one week. I'm talking about two, three, four, sometimes even five week rest before the start of Vienna. You know, so this is, this is, I think it's already online, I believe, in the new calendar for FIB. And this is extremely important. You're right, we talk a lot in FIB about that. FIB care a lot about the health of the player. FIB care a lot to have all the best players in the main event. And of course, they cannot, you know, you cannot expect that to play the final of Champions League, play the VNL if the VNL is one week after the final of Champions League. You know, we said many, many times, we complained many, many times, but I think that after Paris, you know, because the, the volleyball calendar go always four years in four years. After Olympic in Paris will be a big change. And I'm, I'm very, very happy for the player about that. Also for the coaches that are making, you know, they have two jobs is also very important because also we need, and the staff, you know, many staff are working national team and club, many coaches are working national team club. And of course, the best player are making club and national team. And all of us, we need this one, at least 10 days of, of no volleyball that, that would be very healthy mentally and physically. And I think that, you know, till now, I think all of us, all our athletic trainer, all our medical staff, they did really miracles, you know, to keep the player able to perform and train and stay healthy. Perform and train and stay healthy with this amount of matches and with the amount of these important matches. You know, so I think this is what's very difficult. And first of all, I, I really, you know, appreciate the player because are the ones that are inside the arena, you know, to use the metaphor that, that we used before, are the ones that come here every day because, of course, for me, and can be sometimes tired mentally, you know, but I mean, my body is, is you know, is, is not suffering so much, you know, if I make training or if I play with my daughter. Maybe, maybe my body is more tired if I play with Edison than if I am in training. But for a player, the body effort is always there, you know, so they have to jump, they have to fall down, they have to run, they have to lift. And so for them, that they never have rest, you know, really, we have really to appreciate what they're doing because they are not complaining at all. And this is really something, something very big. As you know, there's a new league being established in the USA. Many important players, especially American players, will play in the leagues next season. How will the situation affect the European League's quality? And does the number of players who choose Europe will decrease? <laughs> this is a good question. I think the, mar the, the volleyball market in general will change a lot because, of course, every, every player will be very tempted and happy to, to try one experience in America. You know, so it's, it's very, it's, you know, it's very attractive, this, this new league. And this new league actually is even two. I don't believe they will survive two leagues. I believe in a while only one league in America will stay, but so far there are two, so a lot of demand. Plus Japan will open to one more foreign year, you know, and plus, you know, Italian team are spending a lot of money, you know, before there was only Conegliano spending money, now there is Conegliano spend a lot of money, and there is Milano spend a lot of money, there is Candici spend a lot of money, there is Novara spending a lot of money, so even the, the, the team in Italy that have, that have a big budget is increasing, increase. Of course, you know, it will affect a lot the big market. You know, it will affect all the market. I believe the first league that will be more affected will be Germany, Poland and French. I'm talking about the, the women's side because it's where this league, they were made mostly from these American players that just went out from college and they want to show themselves. So I, I believe this, this big group of players, instead to go to Germany or uh, Poland or France, they will stay in America. And this will, you know, will affect a lot this kind, of, this kind of league. But of course, you know, already the next Champions League will miss a lot of great players. You know, we'll miss a player like Chaka, we'll miss a player like Ogbobu, okay, Chaka, we'll miss a player like Carlini, we'll miss a player like Thompson, we'll miss a player like um, Kelsey Robinson, you know, so a lot of big, big missing, you know. So 
for sure, I believe that all, all the league, they have, to, they have to do something. And I believe that we, need, we, will, we will, for sure, we will be pushed to open to more foreigner we can because we need to find, we need to find player. And American is, is, is really very attractive for, for many, many players. So it will be, will be for sure a problem in the market. As long as we know, Gabi, who is in the team for five years and the captain for two, is leaving the team next year. What happened in the period of Gabi's leaving? How did you feel when you first heard that she was leaving? I cried. <laughs> I don't know if I cried physically, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I was of course not happy, you know, and, and, and me and Gabi, we have an incredible relationship. So we build really a strong relation, a strong friendship. So when, when was the time she was very open to me, so, and, and, and we discuss and, and, and we analyze and, and you know, and we accept, you know, we accept their choice, you know, I think that very difficult, you know, in Bucky Bank so far, like I told you before, I mean, goes there, you know, that is, that is there, you know, was an, an extraordinary captain, you know, Melis was another extraordinary captain, Gabi, it is an extraordinary captain, you know, so the missing of Gabi in Vaki Bank, you know, like was the missing of Gozde, like there was the missing of, of Melis, will be a big missing, not only because she's the best position for in the world, in my opinion, without any comparison with nobody. So not only we will lose the best position for in the world, but we will lose a great captain, you know, so the one that become after Gabi, you know, she have to, to work very hard and she also she have to learn to be a captain because of Gabi and Goss and Melis, they didn't burn captain. They learn how to become captain. So the Gabi of now is not the Gabi of five years ago. And, and she really learned very well all the process, but we will miss her a lot. And, and I think it's normal to miss her and, and she will have always a big, big, big space in, in the Bucky Bank heart and, and in my heart especially, for sure. Would you consider being a head coach of a team besides Vakuf Punk or do you plan to end your career here? I think that there is, there is no, in, in our job, you know, nothing can, be, nothing can be forever, you know, so there is no player forever in a team, there is no player, no coach forever in a team. I mean, what I can say to you very honestly is that I am extremely happy here and I feel really, you know, Vakuf Punk like my child, like my family, like my like my everything in, in, in business why I love to, to, to be in Istanbul, I love to be close to Bar and Ellison and making my job, you know, so it's, it's perfect, you know, and Vaki Bank, you know, always the club give me the best, they're doing for me the best they can. Of course, of course sometimes, sometimes you cannot always have every player that you want, that is normal, but the club is always really try to give to me the best stuff and the best and the player that I can. With the staff, we create really also an incredible group of people that, that we love to work each other and we are challenging each other. So I am very happy here, but maybe the club will not be happy with me anymore, you know, so you never know. And, and, and this is part of the job. So I still a coach. So I have, that means I still a lot of people over me. You know, and so these people over me maybe can, can be happy with me forever and I will be very happy to, to be like, like Ferguson. <laughs> I don't know how, much, how many years Ferguson stay coaching, more than 30 probably. I think, you know, in, 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 in Liverpool, Manchester, I don't know, I'm not an expert of soccer, but I know he coach a lot in the same club. Maybe I will be 30 years or maybe I will stop before, but whatever will happen, I will always be extremely thankful and extremely grateful to Vaki Bank. But so far I still have two more year contract and I want to bring to this club many cup. This year we couldn't bring as many as we wanted and so we still have playoff that is very important for us and we still have the next two years to bring many cup. You are carrying out a very important project uh, for Turkish volleyball with Vakuf Bank, Yarn on Sultanada. Lately, you were in Kreteli for the second look of this project this year. Uh, how did the idea of Yarn on Sultanada come out? What does it mean to you? What did this project change for you and your perspective of volleyball? This project born with one idea, basically. The idea was very simple, is what I can give back to this country after this country gave so many things to me. This was the, the main idea. So this country gave to me an incredible journey in volleyball. This country gave to me an incredible wife, an incredible daughter, you know. So what I 
can give back you know, to, to this country. And what I thought is, is really you know, to, to do something for, for, for the, the kids you know, that, that are living in this country, especially for the women, because everybody knows that Alison, that born in Istanbul from me and Bar, will have a life that probably the girls that will born in Bitlis will she, she cannot have, or, or the, bur, the girls that, that, that will grow, you know, in the very east part of Turkey probably will not. And so we just start with this idea, you know, we, we start the idea, okay, we go to, to the, as many places as we can and we try to give these matches to the girls and to the family and to the school, you know, so we want the, the, the girls that grow in, in Bitlis have the same opportunity like the boys that, that grow in Bitlis, like, like happening in Istanbul, like happening in everybody. So the, the, the big, you know, thema at the beginning, at the base of all the projects is the gender equality. We want that women and boys, girls and boys have the same access to everything in this country, you know, have the same possibility, have the same dreams, have the same aspiration in the life. And we just go in this city, you know, and we try to give this message. And we are using volleyball, because basically the only thing that I can do. <laughs> and so we are using volleyball and we try with volleyball to, to connect them, to say, okay, you don't have to become, you know, like, like a, a Zera or Jansu. The, 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 not only the, the dream, you know, they will be Olympic. They are Olympic players, they are successful. And this is one way. You, you don't have to be like them, but you can be successful as well. You can use volleyball as sport like a tool to know much people, to take care about your body. And then, you know, just the idea that everybody can have a great and bright future, you know, and the destiny is, is open for everybody. So that was the main idea at the base. And lastly, I have a small game for you. Ooh. And uh, I will ask 15 questions about 15, 15 questions about your uh, 15 players. Are you ready? I, let's see. <laughs> I, I, okay, let's see. What is the height of Ali? The, the highest height. of Ali Franti. Yes. I believe one meter 86. Uh. <laughs> 85. 85, okay. Yes. I was, didn't mistake so much. Which team uh, did Jones come from to Back of Punk? Basic Tas? Yes. What is the uh, name of Aicha's dog? The name of Aicha's dog? I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, really, name, I barely, I barely know the name of my player. It's not my, my quality. <laughs> if I have also to know the animal of my player, I cannot. Sassi, uh, how old is Begum? Begum is, I believe, 15. 16. 16. Uh, the unforgettable match that Cheka eliminated Vakif Bank when she was playing in Imoko Kulignano. Chaka eliminated Vaki Bank? Or we eliminated Chaka? No. I think Chaka didn't win. Conegliano didn't eliminate us. Club World Chaka Championship was 2019. Semi finals. In China. Yeah. Ah, Chaka and Robin yes. and Degonu. Correct. Yes. This team. Correct. Correct. I forget. The first cup, Gabi Rose uh, as the captain of Vaki Bank. I think last year, Turkish Cup. Yes. Other Turkish clubs Bianca played in? Yes. Fenerbahce Petete. Easy. Uh, <laughs> at which age Zainab started Vakuf Bank junior teams? I think very, very young. I remember Zainab, maybe even in Selimiye. So I'm talking probably she was 12, 13, something like this. 12, yes. See? Uh, in which team Alexia did uh, win the Challenge Cup? Yes, you did. What is the name of uh, Eileen's husband? Ailo husband. I don't know, but I like this guy a lot. <laughs> Again, don't ask me name. I can tell you he's a sweet, super, one of the sweetest guys that I know. And he came also here two years ago. He was serving like crazy. He helped us win, I think, one series against Fenerbahce with his service. He was really training us very well. But name, I'm not good. No, don't ask me the name, please. How old was Daya when she first joined Vakuf Punk A team? The senior team. Yes, this team. I think also pretty young. 17, 18? Yes, 18. How many cups has Zahra won with Bank of Punk? I have no idea. I have no idea, but I'm pretty sure probably two Turkish Cup, two Champions League, one Club World Championship for sure, two, three league. I would say six, seven. 17. 17. 17. 17. <laughs> six, seven then. <laughs> <laughs> 
you lost against Sarah's former team, who is passing right behind us right now. They uh, killed us. Yeah. Potsdam uh, in the Champions League group stage last year. What was the score of the game? We won. No, you lost. We won in Potsdam 3-2. She has the answer. 3-1. We lost here 3-2. Yes. Uh, which team Bahar started playing in playing volleyball in? Bahar, I mean, we took from PTT. I don't know if she started in PTT. No, Na now she started in Belik Duzu. Belik Duzu. No, true, true. She was in Belik Duzu with Mehmet. True, true, correct. After she, won, she went PTT with Mehmet, and then I'm very glad she's here. Correct. Which college league team Jordan is from? It's also very complicated, but I think they have a red t shirt. <laughs> Since not the universe. Red t shirt? <laughs> Check, I believe uh, the t-shirt is correct. Thank you for everything. Oh, it was done. Well, that's yes. it. Okay, it was not so difficult. I mistake only 50%. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank to you.